Alright, buenos dias mis amigos. Alright, today I'm going to talk about this video here by God a Minute. And I'm just going to sort of review it and then I'm going to disprove what he says using his own reference about King David. Alright, I'm going to show you what he says about King David and what he concludes cannot be true. Okay, and this is incredible here. You notice this guy's got 29,000 subscribers. He made this video two days ago, and he's got 12,000 views. And this, it's amazing. Over a thousand likes. And this guy, this young fella, he's got no business whatsoever teaching anything about the Bible when you're this far off you're not teaching the Bible you're teaching a Hollywood movie now let's go hey everybody it's Aaron and I'm still out of town out of my element I taped a little chart here on the wall I think it's super cool I don't know why I didn't think of this before but this is super neat I don't know what inspired this thought but my question was, when did David die? Thank you for if somebody was mentioning it or it just came off the top of my mind. I don't know what happened here. but um, And also, I'm going to, at the end of this video, I'm going to put a link up uh, or just a picture of my old chart with my timeline and another chart that a brother sent in my Discord. His username is Blackbox. Thanks for sending that. It actually kind of making the connections now. I think this is so significant. And in my brother's Bible here, right around here, it says uh, 970, give or take, you know. Um, All right, uh, just, just for clarification here, th there's no way to know exactly what year King David died. We can track the years from uh, the beginning of creation to the flood, but then I've not seen anything conclusive from after the flood to the time of the birth of baby Jesus. All right, so there's nothing definitive that you can say for sure this is what year this happened um, after the flood okay so this is just an arbitrary number just made up it's it's probably close but there's no way to say for sure that's the number uh, also Wikipedia Samuel said and then also it's been you know for, for since I've been studying this uh, subject uh, it's been pretty common, commonly accepted that the creation of the world was 4004 BC. All right, not a big deal because nobody can prove it one way or the other, but uh, anyways, who cares? Sent me something that said a similar thing. So, so here's the deal. Um, I think, uh, also the chart I'm going to send at the end of the video, I I think he, we just need to adjust some of those years to the year one because of the year zero, but nevertheless, it looks like King David died in and around 971 to 970 BC. Uh, the year one, year zero. What year were you born? Were you born? Were you one years old when you were born? Huh? Who cares? Come on. Okay, so 971 BC or 970 BC, King David dies. 1,000 years later, Jesus dies. Exactly 3,000 years after King David dies is when we are expecting this millennial reign to start uh who's we you and your movie goers that go to watch the hollywood movie with nicholas cage what are you talking about kid right so the, the true kingdom of of christ and we know that david was promised a, well let me get the verse let me get the verse. Let me get the verse. Let me get the verse. I'm moving around here. So this is uh, 2 Samuel 7, verse 16. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne... Boom. Forever. He can't even hear the words that are coming out of his mouth when he reads the Bible. It's not a thousand years. It's forever. Now listen for that word, forever. You know what forever means? I'll tell you, it does not mean a thousand years. It means forever. Forever and ever and ever. 
throne shall be established forever. This is God's covenant with David in Second Samuel uh, 7. The way I have it in the frame, yeah, God's covenant. Here, I'll tell you what, let's do it this way. Let's just do it this way. Oh, no, no, I can't do it that way. What in the world? What is that verse? Thy throne. Oh, goodness sakes, I don't know what it is. And thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. And it's not a thousand years. It's forever. I mean, it says it. He even it, he re, he reads it. He says it, and he still can't hear it. And that's kind of amazing. It really is. It's like a phenomenon. And I'm not kidding you. You go to Second Corinthians three verse fifteen. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. It, they can't understand it. They read it and they can't understand it. He reads it and he says it. The words come out of his mouth and he can't hear it. Covenant with David, and uh, and then it's Second uh, Samuel seven verse sixteen. I'll read it again. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. And for when the Pharisees ever. were talking with Jesus just before they crucified him, or in and around that time, uh, this is Matthew twenty-two, verse. Well, I'll just read 41 through 48. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Lord, how is he the son? And no one was able to answer him a word for... Uh, from that day on, did anyone dare question him anymore? So that's Matthew 22, 41 through 46. So they know that uh, the son of David is uh, significant in, in prophecy. So here we've got this promise to King David in 2 Samuel. And then these, these well, these Pharisees, they, they know the, the answer. It's King David. It's got to come through the line of King David. And so King David dies what looks to be 1,000 right, years. Okay. All right, so here, this is interesting. So in Matthew 22, we get a parallel with what we read in Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now this is a also a parallel with what we read in Genesis 3, verse 15, where... The Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Alright, and so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, this is when the enemy is gathered at our feet. Alright, this is when Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent in destroying all wickedness forever and ever until I make thine enemies thy footstool and we there's several that we can point to but I'm gonna to point to the same ones that I always do so in Revelation 3 verse 9 it says here I will make them to come in worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee all right this is all parallel it's all speaking of the same thing which is the end of this world okay in 1 Corinthians 15 again we're gonna read another parallel where it says in verse 25 for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet all right this happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven which is the end of the world it straightway says that when Jesus comes this is the end 
and he will put all enemies under his feet they will be destroyed and then we'll, we will be set back down on a new earth with new heavens okay so there, there can't be any contradiction to this there cannot be another version of this there's no way to get around what we're reading here in 1 Corinthians 15 it parallels what we read in Matthew 24 when Jesus is asked what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and he says that he will come in the clouds of heaven we will be gathered together unto himself and this is when the enemy is gathered at our feet down below us all right this is consistent all throughout the Bible this idea that Jesus is going to come down and reign for a thousand years it's not found anywhere at all in the Bible all right so again first Corinthians 15 uh, every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming so when he comes in the clouds of heaven this is when we are transformed into our glorified bodies and our we're up in the air with the Lord and our enemy is gathered at our feet there should be no mistake about it all right and so when this happens when we are transformed into our glorified bodies when we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory there's no possible way for there to be unsaved people living after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and because there's no unsaved people that means everybody is saved and therefore there is no reason at all for there to be a thousand year period we do not put our hope into this idea of a bonus thousand years we put our hope in everlasting life Jesus repeatedly promises us the Bible repeatedly promises us everlasting life it's only the devil that would come in and suggest that it's a thousand years or even attempt to confuse what we're putting our hope in and it's just pure wickedness to teach this idea that unsaved people can still get saved after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's pure wickedness that's why Hollywood made a movie about it because they are wicked years before Christ and if that's true then then that is significant then 2030 all right so uh, you know what there's nothing he this guy adds he just he likes to say super duper and pooper scooper and all or whatever he likes you know you know how the kids talk there's nothing really significant what he says here so I'll just end the video right here but again <laughs> when Jesus comes the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world he does not reign for a thousand years he reigns for ever in Luke chapter 1 verse 33 he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever forever is not a thousand years forever is everlasting life life that lasts forever so in Revelation 20 I don't know why people get so confused you you uh, read this term here this phrase here reigned with Christ a thousand years and shall reign with him a thousand years this is not talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years it's talking about us that believe in him we reign with him a thousand years we are reigning with Christ right now during this time period how can you rightly say that you are saved if Christ is not reigning in your life right now it's mind-boggling only the devil would convince you that you are not reigning with Christ right now we read in Revelation 1 even I mean if you if you didn't <laughs> if you skipped over Revelation 1 really you got no business reading Revelation 20 you got no business teaching 
Revelation 20. In verse 6, <laughs> I don't know how you miss this, man. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Right now, we are kings and priests unto God. And of course, in 1 Peter chapter 2, it makes it very clear, very simple, easy to see that we are a royal priesthood and holy nation, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. In Exodus 19, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right now we are royalty. And you remember Jesus, he um, numerous times he says, whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We have eternal life right now. We are saved, sealed, secure, sanctified forever. Right? We shall never die. So when we're born of the Spirit of God, we have everlasting life. That means judgment has been given to us. All right, Judgment has already been given to us that are born of God. Jesus abides in us, and we abide in him. And we are kings unto God and his Father, right? Unto, um, oh, goodness sakes. Unto, what's that say in Revelation 1? I think I said that goofy, didn't I? And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Right, no, that's I did say that right. So that means Jesus is God, right? Okay, so right now judgment has been given to us that are born of God nothing can change that nothing can take away our gift of everlasting life we are safe sealed secure sanctified forever we sit on thrones we are kings and priests unto God and his father and hear this and I saw the souls of those who were beheaded and who had not worshipped the beast. This is what's going on during this time. Right? There should be no mistake about it. We, this is not something that happens in, after Jesus comes. Right? That doesn't happen after Jesus comes. All the wickedness of the beast. I mean, we read this over and over, man. The beast, the false prophet, Satan, death. All that's cast into the lake of fire, and everything is done all destroyed forever. It's okay. So there's no. This is not happening after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You got to be out of your mind to even suggest that. Right now we live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Blessed, or I'm sorry, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Think about. When are we going to be resurrected? Well, we're going to be resurrected at the end of the world. All right. Well, so, what's Revelation 20 says? It says that the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. All right. Real simple. That means at the end of the thousand years, it's the end of the world. There's not multiple resurrections, there's only one resurrection. All right, that should be crystal clear. There shouldn't be. You can't have two ends of the world. Otherwise, the first end wasn't the end. This is logical, common sense stuff. All right, in 1 Corinthians 15, it's to me, it's very clear here. This is as clear as it gets. All right. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. At, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. Then comes the end. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's the end. All right. And so right here where it says Christ the first fruits. Okay, so that means Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. All right, Jesus Christ has died and has rose from the dead and ascended to heaven he is our leader we follow him so also will we die 
rise from the dead, and ascend to heaven to meet the Lord in the air. All right, this is consistent all throughout the Bible. And we, it's, it's being taught so many times that there should be no mistake about it. In 1 Thessalonians 4, And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So at the end of the world, there, you know, you can't make a mistake. You have to be willfully stupid to not understand this stuff. All right, when the, the trump of God sounds, that's the end of the world. When it's the end of the world, we are caught up together. We are gathered together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Just as Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, so also will we die, rise from the dead, and ascend to heaven. There's nothing that we have to do on our own. It's all been done for us. All we have to do is follow Jesus. All right? And so, it's real simple. It's really, really simple. All right, so we go back here to 1 Corinthians 15. Christ, the first fruits, he is the leader. He is the perfect example. He has done it all for us, and we will follow him. First, uh, Christ, the first fruits, right? Then afterward, Christ that is coming. So when we read here, blessed or I'm sorry, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. That's the end of the world. This is the first resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are partakers of his resurrection. We that are born of God. We that are born of God are born of the Spirit of God. And Jesus abides in us. And we abide in him. We are partakers. We shall never die. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. You are not the first resurrection. All right, you're dumber than dog do if you think you're going to be the first. No way. All right. And it's not people who you know, get their heads chopped off. They're not the first resurrection. I don't care how you try to spin this. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection. Right now, the second death has no power over us. I've already shared uh, one verse. That, that should be enough. All right, that should be enough because there's not one single contradiction in the Bible whatsoever at all. Jesus says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. When we are born of the Spirit of God, we shall never die. Never, ever, ever, ever die. The second death has absolutely no power over us right now. No power. We are saved sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Nothing can change that. Nothing can take that away. Right now, we are priests of God and of Christ. I've already showed you. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and Exodus 19, we in uh, Revelation 1, we are priests of God. We are called to preach the gospel to every creature right now. Now, what would be the point of waiting until all the unsaved are dead to then be priests of God? What are you saying? That God's people, they were priests of God in the Old Testament, but now we're, God's people are not priests of God? You, I mean, you see what I'm saying? You've got to be willfully stupid. You've got to be completely evil and wicked to your core to teach anything else. Really? There's no way to get around it. All right, so uh, that's, you know, there's much more I could go over on this, but this stuff is really simple. And I want to just make this crystal clear. 
this is all nonsense right here this is all the whole thing is nonsense really when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and everything will be changed not for a thousand years but for all eternity